discussion today. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, Let's Encrypt. Uh, my name is April King, uh, and I'm an information security engineer here at, at Mozilla. And I'd just like to say before we get this presentation really going, oh, just a brief disclaimer. So, you know, there are many, many adjectives that have been used to describe me. Uh, and, but these adjectives do not include the terms classy or circumspect or anything along those lines. Uh, but because this presentation is apparently being recorded, I'm going to try to be at least a little bit of both of those as best I can, but no promises. All right, so speaking of adjectives, uh, there are a number of other adjectives that do work for me, uh, and these include both old and curmudgeonly. Um, and because I am both old and curmudgeonly, uh, I like to begin all of my presentations with a little history lesson to make everybody in the audience suffer along with me. Um, so I'm going to take you all back. And the year is 1995. And in 1995, uh, there's a new company up and coming uh, by the name of Netscape Communications. And this up and coming company releases a web browser. And this particular web browser is actually really special because, oh my gosh, I should advance the slides. Because for the first time in history, uh, it includes support for a protocol called SHTTP, which later became known as uh, HTTPS. And this is a really big deal um, because for the first time in history, the average human being um, had access to secure private communications over an untrusted network. Now, I mean, sure, there was encryption before 1995, obviously. Like, you know, if you were very technically inclined, you might have had access to a tool called a PGP. And you could use this tool to generate keys and send them to your friends and you guys could send messages back and forth. But it certainly wasn't very easy. Um, you know, and if you were a, a huge corporation with piles of money, you know, you could pay IBM to come out and IBM would set up a, a nice system for you and you could have like encrypted communications over th between your data centers and whatnot. And of course, if you were like a government, then you had your own army of mathematicians and cryptographers to do all this work for you. But, you know, if you were just the average human being, you didn't have access to this. So this was a really big deal. Now. You're probably thinking to yourself, so 1995, you're thinking to yourself, obviously, if you're good at arithmetic, 1995, that's 21 years ago. Um, so given that it's been 21 years, we must be doing an amazing job, right? Everything on the internet must use HTTPS, right? 21 years. But it turns out that actually we're kind of doing a lousy job. See, 21 years later, We've just found through our data from people who opt in to share their uh, uh, information with Mozilla that only about 43% of initial page requests are done over HTTPS. And in fact, only 65% of those follow-up requests are done over HTTPS. And that would be for things like JavaScript files and images and things like that. And that's pretty terrible because, you know, without HTTPS, without secure communications, you're missing out on a whole lot of things. For example, without HTTPS, you don't know, you don't have confidentiality. So you don't know if somebody is monitoring your communications, watching what you're doing. So if you send a credit card, inf a credit card number or a social security number over the internet, you don't know if somebody's just sitting there and listening um, and just like, you know, writing it down. I'm sure they have a little scratch pad, you know? You also don't know that you are talking to who you think you are talking to. You know, without HTTPS, you can type www.mozilla.org into your web browser, and you might get a site, and it might look like mozilla.org, and you might click to download Firefox, and you might get a file that proclaims to be Firefox, but because you didn't use HTTPS, you don't actually know if that's the case. That could have been somebody impersonating our website and offering you up a Trojan version of Firefox. And what's more, you also don't have integrity. See, um, without HTTPS, you don't know if somebody is injecting content in the things you are requesting or sending. So we see this a lot, um, especially with network providers all around the world. Uh, if you're here in the U.S., you might be familiar with like the Verizon Super Cookie. Um, I think a number of other companies are doing this, where if you are browsing from your mobile phone, all of your outgoing requests would contain a unique identifier identifying who you were. Um, even, you know, if you didn't opt into this, you just got, you know, you just got identified to uh, your uh, service provider's uh, strategic advertising partners. Um, and we also see this a lot, uh, particularly in Asia. We see a lot of content injections that put ads in the pages you're trying to browse. Um, or those ads that were in the page you're trying to browse get replaced 
with different ads, and that's a pretty big deal because, you know, if you are uh, me and you really like reddit.com um, and the advertisements that they are offering get replaced with some other advertisements, then the sites that I really want to continue to survive are not getting the money from offering these advertisements. Now, it's been 21 years, and you're listening to me, April King, a security engineer at Mozilla, a company that makes a web browser. So I'm sure in your head you're thinking, April, why haven't you personally fixed this problem? Why haven't you fixed it, April? Why are only 43% of requests done to websites done over HTTPS? And the answer, if anybody is curious, is it's money, people. Yes, indeed. In fact, if you want to have a secure website on the internet, if you want to use HTTPS, you need to have what's called a digital certificate. And a digital certificate, it's like a file, it's kind of like, it's like a driver's license. It identifies you to the people who are visiting your website and allows them to verify mathematically, cryptographically, that they are in fact talking to who they think they are. Um, now, these certificates are issued by about 2,000 or so different entities around the world, and these entities are called certificate authorities. And these certificate authorities want to make money. Now, money is pretty great. If you were to come up to me and be like, April, would you like some more money? I would be like, why, yes, I would. I would indeed enjoy some more money. And I don't blame these certificate authorities. They also want more money. But the problem with money is that when things cost money, things tend to be like, difficult, painful, lousy experiences. See, you know, uh, because when they're lousy and painful, you kind of get locked in, but it's the pain that you know, right? So traditionally, right, if you've wanted a certificate, you know, you, uh, you type some arcane command into your computer and you get a private key, and then you type another command and it generates a file called a certificate signing request. And then you take that file and you might copy it and go to your certificate authority and paste it in some web form and then you submit and then a bunch of back and forth or they verify you are who they verify you are who you say you are and then they give you a file and you download that file and upload it to your website it's a pain in the butt it really sucks uh, I hate doing it uh, I do this professionally for a living I get paid to do it and I still hate doing it well I have some good news to everybody here in the audience and watching and that is there's a new certificate authority in town and it's called Let's Encrypt and it's amazing and I'm going to tell you why it is, in fact, super duper amazing. Now, I'm not going to bury the lead. I'm going to be straight up and honest with everybody watching. Let's Encrypt is a free certificate authority. Totally free. And what that means is that regardless of your ability to pay, you can get a digital certificate. If you are well-known multi-billionaire Bill Gates and you want a free digital certificate, well, I say to you, good sir, you may have a free digital certificate. Or, you know, if you're an eight-year-old girl setting up your first website for the first time, well, you young lady, you also can get a digital certificate. It doesn't matter where you are or how much money you have, you can get a digital certificate. And that's a really big deal because you know, when things cost money, there's a whole lot of restrictions around it, right? There's taxes, and there's international law, and it's really, really complicated. You know, and if you live in a place where you don't necessarily have a local certificate authority or you don't have money, then, you know, not being able to get a free certificate can really make it so you just can't have a secure website. But with Let's Encrypt, you can have a free certificate and a secure website. So not only is Let's Encrypt free, but it's also automated. Now I'll talk a little bit about this more later and how this all works. But see, most of the difficulty uh, in requesting and receiving a certificate is in the process of verifying that you are who you say you are, right? I mean, you don't want to be able to issue a certificate to just anybody who comes along for any website. But Let's Encrypt uses a standardized pro a pro a pro a protocol that's in the process of being standardized. Um, to just do all this automatically for you. It really does appear like magic. You just automatically get a certificate. If you want to revoke your certificate, it just is like magic. Your certificate's revoked. And if you want to renew it, it's like magic again. You just get a brand new certificate. It's pretty cool. So not only is Let's Encrypt free and automated, but it's also transparent. And what that means is that every certificate that Let's Encrypt issues is logged in a system called the Certificate Transparency System, meaning that there's no way for Let's Encrypt to like 
issue certificates for sites that it wasn't authorized for. If we did, it would show up in the system. If you have a site and you want to be monitoring, you know, to see if any certificate authority has issued a certificate for you and you didn't request it, you can look at these logs and be sure that Let's Encrypt didn't issue a cert for your site. And not only that, but if a cert does appear in the wild from Let's Encrypt and it isn't there, then you know immediately that they're not being honest, but they are being honest, they're amazing, and that's why they're using certificate transparency. All right, so they're also an open certificate authority. See, everything about Let's Encrypt that they do is open source. That's amazing. See, that includes not just the, the, the software that runs the certificate authority and issues a certificate, but it also includes the software that you can put on your computer or your server to get a certificate. And in fact, even this very presentation, as amazing as it is, is also open source. You can download it from my GitHub repo. <laughs> Send me a pull request. I'll happily ignore it. It's great. All right. That's not true. I'll totally, I'll totally take a look. Um, so, in addition to all of those things, Let's Encrypt is a cooperative certificate authority. See, a couple years ago when Mozilla went out and decided that this is a real need that need to be, needed to be met on the internet, you know, we found some like really great partners to work with us, including Akamai, Cisco, and the EFF, and they thought, this is an amazing idea. And, you know, they helped build the software that issued the certs and received the certs. And it was really great. And as it went, time went on, many other organizations said, oh my gosh, this is a great idea. This is making the internet a way better place. And we want to help. So they've joined us and become sponsors as well, which means that Let's Encrypt is a nice stable supply of stable income to ensure that it can be around for many, many, many years into the future. Now, because it's so cooperative and the software is so open, and the protocol that it uses is also open, um, it's meant that a lot of people have participated in this whole process around Let's Encrypt. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the process with which you can get a certificate through Let's Encrypt. Now, here's the real question that all CAs struggle with, right? This is the question behind requesting certificates, and that is, if I ask for a certificate for a website, if I say, dear unnamed certificate authority because I am being recorded, Dear unnamed certificate authority, I would like a certificate for Amazon.com. I am April King, but I am also definitely the owner of Amazon.com. Now, that certificate authority is supposed to look at me and say, April, you look super shady. I don't think you actually own Amazon.com, if you know what I'm saying. So, and that's good. That's what they're supposed to do. They're not supposed to issue me one of those certificates. Because if I had that certificate, I could be Amazon.com, even if people did use HTTPS. Now, historically, there's been a number of different ways that we have verified that somebody actually owns a domain uh, that they claim they own. For example, you might ask them to set up a DNS record, right, that, you know, is, is a branch off of, of, of their domain, specifically thing with a special record inside it. And you can pretty, you know, reasonably say that if somebody controls DNS, then they also control the website, right? I mean... If I control the DNS for Amazon.com, I can point it at any server I wanted to. Um, so that's one way. Uh, another way is they might say, we want you to place this particular file on a particular spot on your web server. And then once it's there, you can let us know, and we'll go out and check to see if that file is there. And if you had the ability to place this file on Amazon.com's web server in this specific location, then you probably actually do own Amazon.com. And the lastly, another way is they might say, you know, spin up a, a web server that uses HTTPS with a, this, you know, with a, a self-signed cert that we'll give to you, and then we'll go out and we'll connect to you, right? And if you can do that, if you can listen on port 443 uh, on Amazon.com, then you also probably own Amazon.com. So these have historically been kind of the three primary methods that we've done this. But Let's Encrypt kind of tries to automate all of that away. And it does that through an, a standard called ACME. And uh, ACME stands for the Automated Automatic Certificate Management Environment. And it's a protocol that's in the process of being standardized by the IETF that hopefully, in the future, every CA, every certificate authority can use. Now, the idea of having a standardized protocol is that you can build tool chains around it, right? You know, um, if you make a web server, right, if you make Apache or Nginx or something like that, then you can build support for this protocol right into your web server. Um, if you are trying to set up a, you know, a, a Docker container, you can, like, set it up so that it goes out and it requests a certificate when it starts up through this, uh, through these, uh, through this protocol. 
And because it exists, we've actually seen incredible adoption across the industry. Um, in fact, an increasing number of like web hosts, like big web hosts, right, like DreamHost and Akamai and WordPress and the like, uh, have adopted Let's Encrypt to add support for HTTPS across thousands of domains that never had uh, HTTPS before, and they can do that because of Let's Encrypt. Further, we're seeing tools for pretty much every language you, you can think of um, that support the ACME protocol to help you automate the process of requesting certificates. Um, and a number of web servers have begun the process of adding support for you know, mod ACME or other modules, right, that support um, that support Acme so that like in the future, you know, you can just put the URL for the Acme thing, you know, into your web server's configuration. And regardless of your certificate authority, right, you can just go out and get a certificate when it starts up. And in fact, I'm gonna show you all a demo of that. Uh, this is by uh, a guy named Matt Holt. And Matt Holt writes a web server called Caddy. He's the pri I think he's the primary author of it. And he built in support into his web server for Let's Encrypt and, and Acme. And he recorded a video of himself setting up a web server, getting a certificate, and he put it up on YouTube for us to, for the whole world to see. We didn't ask him to write the code. We didn't ask him to put the video up, but he did it. And I'm gonna show you all what that looks like. All right, so here we go. Are we going? No. Let's try on the side. All right, here we are. He is editing a file that contains the host name of his server. That's it. He's gonna start up his web server, starting up, it's going out to Let's Encrypt to get a certificate, and done. It has a digital certificate. Now he's just gonna to go to his website, he's gonna see it. He's unfortunately, uh, well not unfortunately, he's using Chrome, but you know what, this works in Firefox, it works in Edge, it works in Safari, these Let's Encrypt certificates do. And there you go, he's got a digital certificate, his website works with HTTPS, and that was so easy, wasn't it? That was so easy, compared to all the copying and pasting and cryptic open SSL commands that you've typed in the past. Pretty great. So, Let's Encrypt has been around, uh, available to the public for about three months. So how well has Let's Encrypt been doing since it started three months ago? And the answer is amazing. Um, and in fact, uh, there have been, um, since um, uh, Let's Encrypt started up, over there's currently one over one million unexpired certificates issued by Let's Encrypt covering over two and a half million domain names. And the reason why those numbers are not the same is that a certificate can cover like, you know, website.com and www.website.com and so on and so forth. Um, and the coolest thing about all of that is that the vast majority of those sites have never had HTTPS before. And in fact, of those 2.6 or whatever, 2.6 million um, uh, domains, only about 165,000 of them have ever had a certificate from a different certificate authority. That's incredible. We're actually making a huge difference on the internet. Tons of sites that never had a chance or couldn't afford HTTPS before now have HTTPS. And in fact, if you remember that pie chart, that sad but you know delicious looking pie chart at the beginning of the presentation uh, that said only 43% of requests are done over HTTPS, well, before Let's Encrypt started three months ago, that number was only 40%. So in just a few months, we have moved the needle 3% on the internet. That's huge. I know it only sounds like a small percentage, but 3% is a ton of traffic on the internet. That's incredible. Now, how big is Let's Encrypt? Let's Encrypt is already the fourth largest issuer of certificates in the world behind Komodo, Semantic, and GoDaddy. Pretty cool, um, but this is only the beginning, see? Obviously, I work at Mozilla, and I love the web, and so I wanna see every website using HTTPS, and that's a great goal, but you know, the internet has a lot more stuff on it than just web servers, right? It has mail servers, uh, it has IRC servers, and many, many, many other protocols. So we wanna secure all of those as well. Um, and yeah, so I'm really looking forward to a day, and I think we're definitely moving there thanks to Let's Encrypt. And, and Acme and all of the community support that has been built up around this, where everything that we do on the internet is secure and it's private, and you know that when you are on the internet and you are trying to talk to somebody, that your conversation is secure and private. So, as this presentation is being recorded, I guess I'm kind of talking to, to the whole world, so I guess I have to tell everybody, hello world, let's encrypt.
So does anybody here in the audience here in Portland have any questions that I can answer? Yes. Let's Encrypt does not do wildcard certs. Um, and the reason for that uh, is one is that Let's in, uh, wildcard certs can kind of lead to an, a number of security issues. Um, and two is that it's just so easy to get a cert for whatever name you need with Let's Encrypt. Like, there's no real need to get a wildcard cert. You just start up a server, and if you've never got a cert before, you just run a command, and you, you have a cert. So it doesn't support wildcard certs. Um, another thing that people often ask me is, can I get like a, a four, like a three-year-long certificate with Let's Encrypt? Um, and you cannot do that either. Um, one of the um, one of the things that Let's Encrypt does is they issue short-lived certificates. Their certificates live for about three months, and because they only live for three months, it tends to lead to a world where this sort of stuff, this certificate requesting and website configuration stuff, is automated. Right? If your certificates expire every three months, you can't deal with a process where like, maybe you write a piece of code that monitors all of your sites and goes out every day and say, sends you a list of expired certs and then you go and upload new ones because you'd never be able to make it work. So it forces people to automate the issuance of certificates on their web server um, so that like, you're constantly getting new certs and you know that you know, you're constantly safe and you're constantly using the most secure methods of securing your sites. So the same command, that same single command that it takes to issue a certificate is basically the exact same command you use to get a brand new one. So most people I know just have like a, a process that runs every couple months. Um, usually on the first of the month, I don't recommend it, maybe things are a little slower because everybody thinks the first of the month is the best day. But they just have a process that runs every month or two that just goes out and just grabs a new certificate. It's really, really easy to automate that way. Okay. Yes? So why would Yep, yep. So the question is, why would anyone use a traditional CA? So Let's Encrypt is not, I mean, they're not like trying to take over the world. Like they're, you know, their goal is to make certificates available to everybody. But, you know, these use cases that Let's Encrypt meets are not like every possible use case. Like, you know, there's a lot of um, hardware on the internet, a lot of um, devices that you just can't, you, they're not getting updates. You can upload new certificates to them, but you you can't write new code for them. There's not going to ever be support for Acme built into them. In those cases, like having the option to be able to get a three-year-long certificate and go out and install it once and be sure that it's fine for three years is great. Um, and there's a number of use cases that traditional CAs meet um, that Let's Encrypt doesn't, and that's great, you know. Um, but for the average person who wants a certificate for their website, you know, um, but has never been able to get one before, Let's Encrypt is is the perfect solution um, for getting that certificate. Yes? Are there any features So the question was, are there features that need to be built to, you know, kind of help support supporting chat and, um, and email and other things like that. Um, and the answer is yes. So like currently Let's Encrypt is a little bit limited. Like uh, how Mod Acme works is it either like, or how Acme works is it will either place a file in your web server like so you don't have to like restart it. Um, or it starts up a server that listens on port 443. Um, and you know, Let's Encrypt will talk to that system to, to verify uh, the domain ownership. Um, but for a lot of systems that's not possible. Right? Like if you just have a mail server, you're not going to want to also um, install a web server or install maybe this whole tool chain on there to do that. Um, so um, there's work on possibly um, identifying another port that could be used. There's work on just the whole tool chain around all of the other tools that people use. Um, now, it's not too difficult in my experience to um, uh, make it work with those things. Like the command, there's one command you can run with Let's Encrypt, it just is standalone, right? It doesn't work in conjunction with any web servers. And all it does is it starts up and it puts a certificate on your file system for your domain. So, you know, you just run this one command on your mail server for mail.mozilla.org and it goes out and gets a certificate for mail.mozilla.org. And all you have to do is just, you know, make that automated, have it update every couple months and you point your mail server at that certificate file 
that just it just gets put on your file system and just have it reload every every couple of months as well, and then you're done. So it's not really too hard to get it working with uh, non-webby things, um, but the tool chain could certainly be a lot better. Yeah. Yes. So that's a great question. The question was, why three months? Like, why did you pick three months uh, instead of one week for, for you know, the certificate expiration or one year or whatever? Why three months? Um, and the answer is that like three months was kind of like a reasonable compromise. Um, so one of the things that really is terrible about HTTPS on the internet um, is that, and certificates, is that it's really hard to revoke a certificate. And what I mean by revoking a certificate is saying that the certificate, if you see it in the wild, is no longer valid for my website, right? Or my mail server or whatever. Um, and there's historically been a number of different protocols to make this work, but they've all sucked. They're all terrible. They're all really, really bad. Um, and so, and it's getting a little bit better, but still the process of revocation is, is kind of painful. Um, and so when you have a short-lived certificate, the one that like, kind of lasts for only a few months um, or a couple weeks, um, you kind of get revocation for free, right? What I, what I mean by that is that if somebody breaks into your system and they steal the private keys and they steal your certificates, right, that certificate is only going to be valid for a very short period of time. So while that is super bad, right, it will expire very quickly and those keys will no longer be valid, or that certificate at least will no longer be valid. Um, now as to why it is three months and not like a week, um, which would obviously be better. I mean, if you're right, if you have it automated, you could just have it get a new cert every night. Uh, and the answer is mostly that, like, for people's comfort, right? If if people are used to requesting a certificate that lasts for two years, right, and all of a sudden you're saying you're only going to get a certificate that lasts for a week, then people get really nervous. They're like, well, what if my what if my build system breaks, right? And for some reason, I just I don't. I can't, I can't fix it in a week, right? Then, you know, your, your certificates are going to go bad, right? Um, so there's no reason um, why it couldn't be shorter, and I, I, think, I think in the future there might be the ability to request shorter-lived certificates. But, like, three weeks was, or sorry, three months was considered like, kind of like a reasonable compromise between security and usability. Yeah. Yes? Uh, so the question was, how, what does the browser support look like for Let's Encrypt? And the answer is really, really, really good. Um, so if you use any kind of modern browser, um, then you will have just support for Let's Encrypt. Um, and the way they, they kind of go about this is that obviously you think to yourself, well, if Let's Encrypt is what's called the root certificate authority, they issue certificates, right? You know, that needs to get put into all these browsers. But how do you go back and fix, like, you know, um, how do you go back and fix Firefox 38, right? We can't, like, release a new build of an old version of Firefox that includes Let's Encrypt. And the answer is that existing root certificate authorities will sign Let's Encrypt's root certificate authority. Like, existing root certificate authorities that have been in browsers for a long time will sign that cert so that it tr the, tr the chain of trust that is used to verify site goes up to something that has been around for a long time. Um, so what that means is that if you have a cert issued by Let's Encrypt right now, um, it should work with pretty much anything made in the last quite a while. It works in all the major web browsers, it works in Java, it works in pretty much everything you would expect. Uh, I believe support for very old versions of Internet Explorer is coming very soon, if it hasn't already. Um, but by and large, if you have a site on the Internet and you use Let's Encrypt, you can be pretty comfortable, in fact, that your user base will be able to connect to you just fine. Yep. Right. Yes, one more question. Is there anything that prevents you from uh, requesting certs in more frequently? Um, there, the question is, is there anything that prevents you from requesting certs more frequently? And the answer is no, you can request certs more frequently. Um, the only downside is that, you know, Let's Encrypt has like a certain amount of, um, they can only issue so many certs so quickly, right? So like, I wouldn't necessarily recommend Let's Encrypt to be used for like, you're building a container, right? And it just, you know, during your build process, you, you start up a container and it goes on request a cert and does all these tests. Um, 
I like I wouldn't rec- recommend using it like that because there's um, there are there's rate limiting on how frequently a domain can get new certs. Um, but you know, if you want to request a cert every month or so, like there's nothing stopping you from doing that. So, yep. all right. Well, thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it. Um, have a wonderful day.